This is a warning to thinkorswim traders how Schwab's new portfolio margin rules could cripple your strategy and the six stress tests you need to pass under Schwab's new rules. And I'm also going to do a detailed breakdown of those six stress tests. So who am I? I've been trading for 30 years and figured out how to make a living trading options. And I've gone through over 30 trading courses, which have led me to the conclusion that the only trading instructors who are legitimate are the ones that share their real P&L. And I'm the only proven, consistently profitable options instructor on YouTube where I've consistently shared my P&L since August of 2019. I'm primarily known for helping traders make money in all market environments by employing rules-based, non-directional, options trading strategies. And I've been using portfolio margin since 2017 with Thinkorswim. So what is portfolio margin? It's a risk-based margin policy that offers investors lower margin requirements by evaluating the overall risk of the portfolio instead of applying fixed percentage requirements to individual positions. Used properly, margin is one of the most valuable tools in a trader's arsenal and can actually be used to decrease risk in your portfolio. And you can see here, if you compare Reg T margin with portfolio margin, Reg T is the traditionally used one and it's leveraged usually two to one. As far as being approved, it's pretty easy. You just fill out an application basically, and it's more static. Okay, so it doesn't change much after the position's put on, except with negative op options, that's one exception. But with portfolio margin, it accounts for risk obviously more comprehensively, and it's used for trading non-futures products like SPX, options on SPX, that's what I trade. And the leverage uh, depends, but it can be up to about six to one, right, versus two to one. As far as acquiring it, it's uh, more difficult to get it's not just as easy as filling out an application. And one of the things is it's totally dynamic. After a position's on, it's constantly changing every minute the market's open. So one thing you have to look out for with portfolio margin is that it can expand rapidly. In other words, it can, your margin can increase very quickly. So how do traders qualify for portfolio margin at Schwab or Thinkorswim? It's available to qualified Schwab clients who currently have a margin account, so that's first, and then you meet the following requirements. You gotta have $125,000 in equity in the account. You need to have full options trading approval, and you must achieve a score of 80% or better on an options test that they give you. And if approved, the account's total net liquidation value must remain above $100,000. So why use portfolio margin? So why I use portfolio margin, I run a couple strategies with the premier level five strategy and the duck strategy, one of my newer strategies. And I use it for two reasons, early management, high return optimization, and also I use it with profit stacking. So what is early management, high return optimization? With reg T margin, you typically have your full risk at expiration. So your buying power, is the amount of money you can trade with. So once you put on, typically with Reg T, once you put on a position, you're pretty much using almost all the margin that you can use, except if you have naked options, of course. And the worst case scenario is if you enter the trade, the amount of your buying power is reduced by the total loss that you can face if you held the position all the way until it expires. Now with portfolio margin, they use a different risk calculator and they don't use the same calculators as Reg T allowing for potential higher returns on your investment and buying power. So lower buying power reduction. So another thing you get with portfolio margin is a lower buying power reduction. So when trading with portfolio margin, you need less buying power to enter a trade compared to Reg T. So you have the ability to get a greater return on capital for the same level of risk. So you can achieve a higher return on your investment if you manage your trade before expiration. So on this hypothetical example, with regular margin, you can see here your buying power, you could use about $21,500 in order to get this profit target of a thousand. So your goal is to make a thousand dollars. And if you use $21,500 to make that thousand dollars, 
you're going to make only about 4.65% return. If you're using portfolio margin, trying to get to that thousand dollars, you might only use, for example, $2,800 in buying power, and that's a 35.71% return. So you can see how that leverage really comes in handy. You can really increase your returns. And again, it has to do with taking profits early, not holding all the way till expiration. So your risk does not really increase. Also, the second reason is profit stacking. So what is profit stacking? This is the second reason I use portfolio margin. You can effectively use your buying power to double dip and you can trade an efficient option structure on top of uh, going long other assets such as bonds or stocks. So for example, if I had $100,000 in capital, I could buy $100,000 worth of treasury bonds making four to 5% and still have around $99,000 to trade options. So that's like having $100,000 in the account and trading with $200,000. So the term I use to describe this double dipping is profit stacking. So it's almost like having two separate accounts, right? So if you start here at the top of the $100,000, but hypothetically you have account number one, like $100,000 to trade bonds. And then hypothetically you have account number two, $99,000 to trade options. So you're really trading with around $199,000. So that's profit stacking. That's the second advantage of portfolio margin. Use portfolio margin wisely. So is this risky? Well, trading and investing can be risky, as you know, but if you don't have an all encompassing plan that accounts for worst case scenarios, you know, that could be an issue. So many people are unaware that by effectively utilizing portfolio margin, it's possible to manage strategies that are significantly more efficient than those that are available or achievable with rec T margin. In fact, there are specific types of trades that are entirely unfeasible with Reg T margin, but can be successfully executed using portfolio margin, like the uh, Premier Level 5 that I trade and the uh, Duck trade. So why is it important to understand portfolio margin requirements stress test? Well, it's to avoid margin calls. A margin call in a portfolio margin account can be issued anytime the account has fallen below the firm's margin requirements. And this happens when the account fails a stress test. Why do you want to avoid margin calls? So first force liquidation. You don't want to have to meet a margin call by depositing funds or selling off assets at the worst possible time when they are the lowest that they are and you take significant losses. Markets volatile. This can happen. You're at your lowest point with P&L and then you're forced to liquidate. Also, there's another reason, substantial financial losses. Again, I talked about forced liquidation. If you're forced to sell during market downturns, that's the worst part. You're locking in large losses. Also, there could be a debt obligation. So if the liquidated assets do not cover the margin call, guess what? You're going to owe the difference to your broker. Uh, when you get a margin call, there's also account restrictions. Your broker is going to impose restrictions on your trading account, limiting your ability to trade or use margin in the future until you can fix uh, the problem and get the margin status back in order. Also, it could have an impact on your credit score. Uh, if you have unpaid debt to your broker, uh, that's going to ding your credit score. So you have to be careful. Don't You don't want to get margin called. There's also psychological stress. I mean, the financial strain and uncertainty associated with a margin call can cause significant stress and anxiety affecting your overall well-being and decision-making ability. And also there are possible legal uh, consequences. In extreme cases, unresolved debt with your broker could lead to legal actions. So further complicating your financial situation. You don't want to get into a situation where you're getting a margin call. What can you do if you get a margin call from Schwab? Here's what you can do to meet the requirements. So a trader can deposit cash or marginal securities. You can close existing positions to reduce the overall margin requirements, or you can open trades that would create cash or reduce margin requirements. And margin calls may have up to two days to be met, or they may be due immediately based on market conditions. So Schwab portfolio margin has six stress tests. So I met with the Schwab portfolio margin team uh, multiple times, and I learned that there are six different stress tests that determine a margin call. And each stress test is determined on an individual basis. And there is one stress test that accounts for a majority of the margin calls. 
So it is the most strict stress test. And I'll go over that one, of course, with the other five. So margin call stress tests. There are six ways to get margin calls based on the Schwab requirements. Now, these are not in any certain order. And the names of these tests are the names that I gave them. I mean, they're pretty similar to the real names of the tests, but the real names of them can be a little bit confusing for me. So number one, net liquidation value. Number two, the total Vega test. Number three, the short options net short units test. Number four, the $5 million test. Number five, the cash to net liquidation test. And number six, the SPX or the beta weighted test. Remember, if your account fails a stress test, one of these six stress tests, a margin call will be issued. And it's a margin call, again, is a notification from your broker informing you that your account equity doesn't meet the necessary requirements while trading with borrowed funds. So next I'm gonna get into each individual stress test with examples. And again, they're not in any particular order. So stress test number one, account, account net liquidation test. So your account net liquidation, this will get triggered if it falls under $100,000. Let me show you an example. Okay, stress test number one, it's again, not in any particular order. Account net liquidation goes below $100,000. You can see here, this account right here is worth $305,000. It's a portfolio margin account. If this net lick right here goes below 100,000, uh, I will get a margin call. An example, uh, if I were to buy, I'll say I'll buy some of those. Let's say I was going to buy 100 of those. Let's, let's analyze this. If I were going to buy 100 of these, it would cost me, well, let's see what it would cost. If I hit this confirm and send here, $362,000. So let's say I'll buy less of those. Let's say I'm going to buy $303,000 worth of these, and I own these puts, and the market goes up. And these puts start to go down in value. And let's say that the market goes up and they go down in value. So if I start with 305,000 approximately, and I'm down, let's call it 252,000. It's 252. Well, at that time, I would only have $53,000 on my account. I would have less than $100,000 net liquidation. And at that point, I would get a margin call. That would be stress test number one. Stress test number two, it's the total Vega test. So if the total negative Vega of the portfolio is larger than 12.5% of the account value or net liquidation, then you can get a margin call. I'm going to give an example. So if the account value is $100,000, then the total negative Vega cannot exceed, let's run the number there, 100,000 times 0 0.125, $12,500, which means that the total negative Vega cannot be higher than minus $12,500. And here is an example of that. Okay, an example of stress test number two would be the total Vega test. And that would be that the Vega in my portfolio is too high, right? So they look at my account value, which is like 305,000, okay? So let's call it 305,000, 580, and multiply that times 0.125, Okay, so I have this 38,000, let's call it 200, right? That's the number my negative Vega can't go over. If you looked at my portfolio, let's say for example, that I were to go short the December 25th, uh, 1200 put. That's for going for about 260. Well, you can see here in my slice here, this current price, and then you can see the Vega of that particular position is minus 4,500. So let's say that I do short 300 of these, for example. Let's see what my Vega would be. Minus 
13,000. So I'm I'm still good, remember, because I've my Vega can't be, can't be lower than 38,197 based on 12.5% of what my account value is. So uh, I could put that position on based on the Vega, the total Vega test. Um, you can see over here my margin requirement wouldn't allow me to uh, to put it on, but that's I'm not talking about you know that. I'm talking just just the Vega test. Let's say I do this a thousand of these. What's my Vega? I'm going to the zero slice, looking at the Vega. See my Vega right here? Minus 45,974. Do you see that's more than 12.5% of my account value? That would fail the total Vega test right there. That would cause a margin call based on the stress test that I have number two here, the total Vega test. So that's one way you could get margin called. Stress test number three, short options net test. For SPX, it's minus 1,000 per unit or net unit, right? Net short option. And if higher than the net liquidation, if that number's higher than net liquidation, then the margin call is issued. Uh, for volatility products, it's minus $500 per option, and equity options, it's minus $200 per net short option. For example, you have a $100,000 account with SBX options in the portfolio, and the net short options are 101 in count, like you have 101 short options. Then 101 times 1,000 equals 101,000, and that's more than the net liquidation of a $100,000 account. So here's an example of that. Okay, let's talk about what I have labeled here as stress test number three, which is the short options test. It's actually the short net options test. So I wanna make that clear. If you have long options in the portfolio, they can counteract the short. So let's say, let's make this 100 here. Let's say that this is my portfolio. This is my total portfolio, these two here. I'm net short 900, okay? Net short 900. I'm not short 1,000. I'm short 900 uh, puts at this point, or just short 900 options. Could be puts or calls. Now, again, I'm just going to talk about SPX. I get dinged $1,000 for every one of these that I'm short. And when that crosses my net lick, that's when I get margin called. So for example, I have 300 and let's just call it 6,000, 306,000. And I divide that by 1,000, it's 306. So that's how many net short options I can have in the account. If I have 307 or 308, that's when I start getting margin called. So here I'm short 900, right? So let's make this uh, 400. So now I'm short, net short here, this little portfolio here, I'm net short 300. I'm okay, because I have, I'm only dinged $1,000 per, so I have, you know, it's taking out $300,000 of my buying power, but I still have, you know, 5,000, I still have five more to go. So if I went to 400 or uh, 400 and seven, let's say, now I'm net short 307 uh, puts or net short 307 options. And that would take up $307,000 in buying power. And at that point, I would get margin call based on the short options net test, right? It's the net short options test. And I'm calling that test number three. So that's one way that you can get margin call there. You don't want to be short too many options. Stress test number four, the $5 million test, as I call it. So they run a test to see if the account is ending with minus $5 million. For example, if the account is worth $10 million and the stress test shows a minus $15 million number, then the account is negative $5 million after the results of the stress test. And the test is looking at the 20% slice down and adding 50% volatility per option in the account. So here's an example here I'll show you in Thinkorswim. Let's talk about stress test number four that I call number four. 
and I call it the five million dollar test and basically what that means is you don't want your account to be net short five million dollars it'd be really hard to do with a three hundred thousand dollar account but if you have like a ten million dollar account let's say you have a ten million dollar account and you run a test this test that i'm going to show you and your net lick would be five million dollars in the hole so fifteen million dollars so if you had a ten million dollar portfolio but your uh, positions were showing after this test of minus 15 million dollars right then you would be you would have a negative five million dollar uh, situation right so it needs to be like that there's with a hundred three hundred thousand dollars they're not gonna let me put on anything that's gonna end up being short five million dollars but this is one of the stress tests so I call it stress test number four so that's just an example of what it needs to end up looking like okay so now that I talked a little bit about the five million dollar situation how do they determine five million dollars so what they do is they take your 20 percent slice down and they look at the P&L day uh, you can see it right here you'd be down uh, the requirement here would be 20,888 but you got to add volatility so it's not just the 20 percent down it's 20 percent down plus 50 percent volatility so let's look at this and i'm going to add volatility you each you have to add 50 percent volatility to each leg this particular portfolio i'm just looking at one thing here just as one uh, option so when i add the for uh 50% vol. I'm going to make this 49.87. I'm going to add 50% to it. So let's do that. So 49, 49.87 times 0 0.5, 50%. I would add 24.93. So right here, I can add 24.93. That'll increase the vol where it needs to go. Okay, so now when I look at this minus 20% slice, you can see the PL day goes all the way to 292. Remember, it was only down about $20,000. Now the requirement's $292,000. Okay, now if this becomes $5 million more than what my net lick is, so that would this would have to be uh, $5,305,000 or $5,306,000 then this particular stress test number four, the $5 million test would be triggered. Okay, so that's stress test number four. It doesn't happen very often. Stress test number five, the cash to net liquidation value. So you wanna make sure that too many options were not sold in the account. So the more sold options, the higher they look at the risk in the account. And the way that this is calculated is you multiply the net liquidation by 15, and then you compare that to the cash in the account. So if the account, and now also you need to know, in the account there's two balances. There's the net liquidation balance and the cash balance. So for example, if the net liquidation balance is 100,000, then the cash balance needs to be less than that 100,000 times 15 or $1.5 million. So here's an example in the Thinkorswim platform. Okay, stress test number five would be cash to net liquidation value. So we're gonna look at the net liquidation and they wanna find out, well, what is this number right here times 15? That's the first thing you do. So let's go 305. 580 times 15. So now I have this, you know, this number of 4,583,000. So this is the number they're going to be looking at if something gets over that. Now what needs to go over that? Well, this cash balance right here, this cash balance, it's only 41,000 because I'm using some of it. But if that cash balance gets above 4.5 million or 4.6 million approximately, that's when they're going to say, wait a minute here, we're going to margin call, you know, well, how would that happen? I could sell a bunch of options and collect a lot of premium 
And so I would be, I'd be collecting so much premium. Uh, let's say, for example, let's say that I were to sell something a little more expensive here and see how much premium I'd collect if I sold this. 350,000, okay. So um, for every 100 shares. But again, I got to get over that 4.58, you know, I've got to collect a lot. Let's try like 1,500. So if I sold 1,500 shares, I, I don't have, I won't have the margin, but this is one way, this is, you know, stress test. Number five, cash to net liquidation. If I were to sell this, I would collect $5,281,000, okay? So that number would be over this 4.5. It would be 5 million. So I would be, according to the rules and what I'm calling stress test number five, cash to net liquidation value, I would be over leveraged because I would have too much, I would have sold too much premium and I would have over $4.583 million in premium in my account. And when that happens, I would get a margin call. So that would be the cash to net liquidation value. So that's one way to get margin called. Stress test number six. This is the SPX or the beta weighted test. It's the most commonly used stress test. It's the most sensitive stress test and the one that is triggered a lot. This is the one that gets triggered more than all the other ones. And it uses the T plus zero line or if the underlying moves X amount daily or X amount within a day or today. And before I go over the example here, I'm going to go over the T plus zero line. You can see here the downside risk. If it's minus 12, it's just straight up uh, multiplied by one. If the minus 20% slice, and I'll explain all this. If the minus 20% slice divided by two, the minus 25% slice divided by three, the minus 30% slice divided by four, the minus 40% slice divided by eight, and then on the upside, it's the plus 10 slice, and then the plus 20 slice divided by three. And this will use the, S, the beta weighted test to see the stress on the account. And I'm gonna go into details on what I just talked about right now in TOS. Now, all those five ways that I just went over, the f number one way, you know, when your net liquidation gets below 100,000, that's pretty common. But then the other ones, two, three, four, and five, those, those aren't as common. Now, I'm going to get into one of the other most common ones. And what it's called is the SBX beta weighted test. And I call it stress test number six. Let's say that I was going to do this. I was going to go short four of these put options here and using the SBX weight, uh, beta weighted scenario, I would have about $240,000 in margin right now. But also what it takes into account is what happens with these slices? So the 10% up, 20% up, 12% down, 20% down, 25 and 30 and 40% down. So you can see here's the zero slice. So it's trading at 52.91. So this will be at 52.91. And then if the market goes up 10%, it'll be trading here at 58.11. You can see it's up 10%, uh, 58.20. And then if it's up here, this would be up 20%. You know, the market would be at 63.49. So this is around 63.49. And then these are the slices on the way down, right? So you've got the minus 12 here, then the minus 20. 25 minus 30 minus 40. Okay, so you can see those slices in here, but they're also here. And what you're looking at here is the PL day. What happens if in one day those went there? And how much would your margin go? So basically, here, let's talk about the current margin is 239,000 there, but what if it went down 12%? Well, you could, the margin requirement here would be $174,000. So currently the margin requirement could be up to $174,000 because you would take that and you would multiply it times one and that'll give you your margin. Now, when you go to the minus 20% slice, you would divide that by two. So the 20% slice is 342, 342 
1,780. And you divide it by two, and now your margin requirement is about 171,000. Okay, that would be at your 20%. Let's look at your 25% slice, 448,604. So 448,604, but when you get to the 25% slice, in order to get to your margin requirement, you divide it by three. So you'd have $149,000. So that's how much they're, so they're gonna take the highest one, okay? Whichever one's the highest one. So far, the 12% slice is higher than the 20, uh, the 20% slice is higher than the 25. And let's look at the 30% slice, which is uh, if, you know, if the market went down 30% in one day, they say you'd be down 554, 432, 554, 432, but you divide that one divided by four. So 138,000 is what they're keeping over here. So that wouldn't be the one that's highest. And let's look at the one, let's say that you were at 40% down. So when they do 40% down, 766088, 766088, this one you divide by eight and it's 95,000. So this one has less of a requirement than the 30% slice and the 25% slice. Now let's look at the positive uh, uh, slices in a little more detail. So you can see here, these are actually positive, so they have the minimum margin, but I'm gonna go ahead and make, let's make this uh, portfolio to where these numbers would be negative. So maybe if I buy that. Okay, so you can see here, this one is a negative 10,000, this one's negative 10,000 also. So the way the positive 10% slice, that's a multiplier of one. So that's 10,450 right now. Therefore, that would be the margin requirement. Now on the plus 20%, it's a little different. It is divided by three. So on the plus 20% slice, it's what, 10,000, let's call it 440 right now. And you divide that by three, so that would be a three thousand four hundred eighty dollars. So this one's a divided by three, much like the twenty-five percent slice on the downside is divided by three. The plus twenty percent slice is divided by three. If it's negative, if it's positive, I'll get into that next. Now, if it's positive, it's not going to require. Uh, it'll be the minimum margin. Okay, so minimum margin is. Uh, how many contracts do you have times 37.5? So this would be not very much margin at all, times 37.5. So $150 margin. So I wouldn't use any margin hardly at all on the upside. Except for how much you paid for it, of course. You're gonna pay that margin, but it's not margin won't expand on you in that case. So you don't have to worry about a margin call when you pay for something. So that's how they calculate the beta weighted, SPX beta weighted. And this is the one, this SPX beta weighted, this is the one that catches the most people where you get, because if you have some type of trade where, you know, your downside just falls off a cliff, you could get margin call based on the 40% slice, right? So you have this thing that, you know, goes crazy, you know, just drops off a cliff like this that 40% slice could catch you. Those are the six stress tests. You wanna make sure that you can pass in order to not get margin called with the new Schwab requirements. In parting here, I just wanted to emphasize this is not financial advice. It's for educational purposes only. And I wanna emphasize that I'm not providing financial advice and encourage you to perform your own research and consult your broker for personalized guidance on this topic.